So this is just We the People News. One more time. Edit. Alrighty. Uh, let's see here. Where am I? Okay. Um, anything I say or do is not legal advice. We just don't look straightforward. We always look around us, be able to protect yourself by any means necessary. Alright. And this is kind of a follow-up of more videos. Uh, my previous videos and all that. Where is our remedy? And why are not people in government in jail for committing crimes okay remember y'all if you don't know the basic law then you don't know your basic rights you don't know if the cops are breaking basic rights or judges violating your rights and if you don't know your basics then how can you be a good jury member and how do you know the attorney is operating in good faith and an honor as well for the value conferred on the victim and that restitution should not compensate victims for more than their actual loss in a concurring opinion justice andrew hurwitz who clearly has sane functioning faculties stated that quote if the restitution statutes are read to require that the amount paid is invariably the measure of restitution an untenable result would obtain a homeowner who received flawless work from an unlicensed contractor would be refunded the full amount paid, but would nonetheless also retain the work performed. It is impossible for me to view such victim as having suffered any loss, economic or otherwise. Can you please tell me how all three appellate court justices in my case found these sane, rational and lawfully based arguments by their so-called brethren of the highest court in Arizona meritless? In the M.W. Erector's case, the company erected the structural steel for the Disneyland Grand California Hotel. But because it didn't have a structural license before the contract was signed, the Superior Court judge, who just happens to be the same trader in my case, found that the customer didn't have to pay around $1.2 million for the work. For nearly 100 years, this egregious abuse of authority has been used to destroy people of California and their businesses. And no matter how many times it is challenged in the courts, there is no judicial remedy. Despite admitting that the statute imposed a penalty in the M.W. Erector's case, the California Supreme Court upheld the judgment and failed to recognize any of the excessive fines clause protections, let alone a plethora of other constitutional issues I'll address in part two. All of these issues render the judgment void. It appears M.W. Erector's was forced out of business, unable to sustain a $1.2 million loss, and ultimately left California. Can you imagine the damages claims on the judges and their estates for these acts of fraud and treason for the countless cases since the inception of this statute? No wonder they refuse to admit any wrongdoing and throw your case out if you challenge their authority. And because you've gone through the courts, the court process already, that was your due process. No, no, that, no, no. Due process means that it's within the law, and they can't just, you know, financially destroy me and call that due process. That, that's not how it works. Oh, th th there, there was no due process. So to claim that there was, and to say that uh, committing treason is due process, treason means they're exercising authority that they don't have. Th to commit treason and call that due process is, is absurd. I, in his report, Darren also tells us that he contacted two Orange County District Attorneys who told him, quote, the Constitution protects people against the deprivation of life, liberty, or property in circumstances when they were not afforded the benefit of due process of law. Well, how in the hell does a piece of paper do that when the officials entrusted with carrying out its provisions refuse to do so? The two traders posing as assistant district attorneys he contacted are Clyde Von Derahe and Bill Fecchia. The bottom line is that Darren saying there's a lack of probable cause in his report without providing competent authority to substantiate this finding is an egregious abuse of authority. His duty isn't just to scribble down some words in a report claiming he didn't find any evidence to substantiate a crime. He has to back up these findings with facts and conclusions of law and he has none. He fails to cite even a single authority claiming any of my allegations were false or unfounded when held up to the light of the highest laws of our state and country. At the time of the complaints I made to Darren, records requests showed that he had, at minimum, 
Never subscribe the oath of office for police officer and sergeant as required by Article 20, Section 3 of the California Constitution, and therefore appears to not have been in office. After making an additional complaint to him and his chief, John Lewis, he has refused to subscribe the oath of office as of my last document request. During one of our conversations, Darren told me he had never received training on how to investigate a deprivation of constitutional rights claim. I believe he was being sincere. So I shared with him that it's no different than any other investigation. Most of the rights to property and liberty guaranteed by our constitutions show up as penal code violations like theft, robbery, false imprisonment, etc., which are all just statutes recognizing these constitutionally protected rights and the myriad of ways they can be violated. You interview the victim, examine the evidence, and see if a violation has occurred. It's nothing other than basic police work, and he's had more than 20 years on the job with this. After Darren closed my case, I made a complaint to every member of the City Council of Newport Beach. I reported Darren's purported lack of training and experience, as well as his refusal to properly handle my complaint. I requested that the City Council ensure he was properly trained and provide me with an official who could properly handle my case. A few days later, I received an email from City Attorney Aaron Hart. He stated, quote, Our office has reviewed this matter, and it is our opinion that the police department has acted appropriately regarding your complaint. In our view, this is a civil dispute that is properly handled by the judiciary and not by the police department. Hence, the city of Newport Beach will be taking no action related to this matter. End quote. I also made a complaint to Lieutenant Sean Paul Crawford of the Irvine Police Department. That's not nothing here that I have to offer you, unfortunately, at the Irvine Police Department at this time. Crawford told me that because this situation wasn't happening in the city of Irvine, he had no jurisdiction. This is a lie. Our constitutions apply within the territorial bounds of this state and nation. Moreover, there is an agreement known as Protocol 101, signed by every chief of police and the sheriff of Orange County, that extends the authority of any officer to the entire county. This document was signed by the former chief of Irvine Police Department. Additionally, beyond the city limits, officers have the same arrest powers as private citizens. Crawford has also not subscribed an oath of office for any office he has held at the Irvine Police Department, according to records request responses. Let me show you. Article 20, Section 3 says it clears... Okay, so this right here is very important. This is the reason why you get a copy of the oath of office and your state of what it says and see what the difference is and if they actually do, in fact, have the correct oath of office, people. So you need to be really careful of uh, nitpicking these oath of office, right? Does it match the state? Of course, now that being said, that they're all supposed to be having an Article 6 oath of office. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I said it. Article 6, uh, 4, uh, Section 101. Every one of the office that's in government, working in government, that includes uh, CPS and all that kind of stuff, even though it's a separate corporations, they're paid by the state. They're supposed to have the oath of office as well. And they're supposed to sign a, a, a Foreign Registration Act. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and proceed forward on that. Okay. Public officers, like police officers, shall, before they enter the duties of their respective offices, take and subscribe the following oath or affirmation. Let's just read the first few words of the oath together. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Now, let's look at this document produced by the Irvine Police Department that's titled Oath of Office and read the first few words. I, Sean Paul Crawford, will aspire to make the Irvine Police Department a world-class leader in policing. This is not even remotely an oath of office. But it gets worse. According... So even by that, there's still a contract between them. So when they break statutes, codes, rules, and regulations, you can actually still hold that contract with the city uh, that's anything against you. But... There we go again. If they didn't take the oath of office, did they break the contract with the Constitution or not? Remember, uh, everybody assumes 
They're not security guards for the city. And that's exactly what they are and evident right here. Right? They're just a security guard. <laughs> that's all. And somehow or another, the security guards have authority over you. Allegedly. To the Irvine PD, quote, Over the last couple years, the department has moved away from signing oath of offices, which is the reason you will only see one attachment for Lieutenant Crawford, end quote. I confirm this was an unwritten policy, obviously in direct violation of the California Constitution. It is unknown how many officials of the Irvine Police Department are collecting money from the public treasury while not even lawfully holding public office. I also made a complaint to the Orange County Sheriff's Department since they are the agency that has direct jurisdiction over the Orange County Superior Courts. My first complaint was made to Sergeant Salcida and Deputy DeMaio at the courthouse. DeMaio is the female officer you'll hear. Civil judgment. Yeah, that's that's the problem we have. It's not like the judge walked up to you on the street and took your money by force of fear. Yeah. So, will you guys even take an information report? For what? No, it's still fine. You had a judgment made against you. An investigator is not going to investigate that. Hello. The judge doesn't have to point a gun to steal money. He just signs a judgment order without lawful authority. And this nonsense about a civil case? That has nothing to do with it. No authority to do something, no matter what kinds of case, means no authority. When these deputies refused to investigate, I went up their chain of command. Within a few days, I was invited to make a report at the Sheriff's Department headquarters. This report led to an inquiry by Investigator Mike Lee. Here's what he told me. Uh, we're going to pause uh, there and uh, finish this one out. This we the people news. Their job when you vote the sheriffs in is to protect your rights against them. Alright? There's a line right there. The sheriff is actually yours. It does not belong to the courts. It does not belong to the well, it belongs to the jailer and all that. But the sheriff's job is there to protect you from government intrusion. They have the authority that they've been misled to arrest these judges. They do have it. But we've been misled of them saying they don't have it and they sign contracts waiving their uh, rights after you vote them in. Their contract is with we the people. Not with the government. It's a different entity, separate entity that they combined into one and the same. But it's where we are today. Get your sheriffs back in line. This is We The People News. Bye, y'all.